All right, Reefers, we're back here in the farm with Kevin, and today we're gonna to be talking about the top 10 intermediate SPS corals from our farm. Recently, we did a video where we did the top 10 beginner SPS from Top Shelf Aquatics, but today we're gonna to take it to the next level. We're gonna start talking about the intermediate pieces that you guys can pick up yourself. We'll actually start off with talking off with the ACI Manila Spy. So this is one we grabbed from Chris down at ACI. Can you tell us more about the Manila Spy there, Kevin? I know it looks really like a lot of different corals. It doesn't actually look like a Monty, but it actually is a Montipora. Yeah, so that piece is a, a Montipora that does have a similar appearance, I would say, to maybe a, a TNT, an acro, something along those lines, but the growth structure is a bit different. Uh, it actually kind of shelves out a little bit with really fine spindly branches, but can sometimes form more fan-like shapes to it. Um, really interesting piece, can be pretty fragile. Uh, an interesting story about that one is it was originally brought in by Jake Adams and you know he was growing that out in his studio for a while. At first they thought it was uh, Matpora hirsuta and they actually had figured out over years when they had some I believe DNA testing done where it was uh, Carinata, Matpora Carinata, which is a very very rare type of Monty. As far as I know there's no other ones of that species in the hobby currently. Um, and then he had passed it along to his friend Chris Meckley at ACI Aquaculture and he had passed it along to me where we had brought it into our farm since anything different and you know nice especially Monty's we have a good array and nice collection of that stuff so um, the vibrant color and the unique growth structure is really what captured me on that piece so uh, we've been having great success with it it's been a really good grower you know nothing that needs extremely high light or any crazy flow um, I would say more moderate in both of those regards. Uh, gets deep red, rich coloration. And again, it's pretty straightforward. So if you're you know, feeling confident, you kind of graduated to that entry level um, and you're looking for a bit of a more challenging piece, well, not challenging as far as care, but more unique, I would say that would be a great one to kind of you know, dip your toes into and, and get growing in your tank, yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, it definitely seems like, I know first time I came into the farm, it was something I noticed right away but I didn't know exactly what it was. So I think it's cool when we have these certain corals that we add into our systems that not anyone can just put an eye on and say, oh, it's that, and it's got a little bit more of a story to it. So the Manila Spy is definitely one we'd offer up for you guys to try out in the intermediate level. Um, we'll go ahead and step up to the next one. We were talking about the ORA Pearlberry Acro. So oh yeah, that's a favorites. Okay, so it's one of your favorites. It's a really nice piece. I love the colors on it. Uh, go ahead and talk a little bit more about that one. Yeah. The Pearlberry is, is one of those iconic pieces that you know, any stickhead out there is probably has in his tank or has had in his tank at one point or another. Um, cool thing about that piece too is it really looks great under any light spectrum that you put it under. I mean, heavy blues, um, daylight, really whatever. It just has that nice pop to it, uh, almost like a translucent, pearlescent look, you know, just varying colors with greens. You know, ivory, purple, blue. I mean, it's it's a killer piece. Um, one that you know likes a good um, you know a good amount of light overall. You know, solid flow. Uh, definitely, you can throw a lot at that piece, and it, it does really well. Gotcha. And this is one we got from ORA, and we started culturing here in the farm now. So, funny story with that is ORA originally released that piece years back, and then. They must have lost their mother colony or something happened along the way because it just wasn't available for the longest, longest time. Uh, but I had a friend who had grown a pretty sizable colony and we would trade and, and do different things. Um, so originally we got, I believe, the organ tort and the pearlberry from him. And fortunately, we were able to add that to our collection and we've been growing it for some time. Um, and now ORA does have that back growing again. So it's, it's out there, you know, there's definitely some lookalikes, but none that really stand out with that vibrant, vibrant color like the, uh, the true ORA Pearlberry. Gotcha. I, you just mentioned actually one, I think we were gonna talk about it as well, the blue tort, the organ blue tort. 
that's one that I've seen that in natural spectrum, it looks insane. I mean, the Definitely. blues are crazy. I know they stand out super well. It looks great in blue lighting too, but I think in, under that natural spectrum, it's much, much nicer. Do you see people having more success when it's under that natural lighting or same amount of success with the blue lighting? I think you'll get better, more rich coloration in regards to the bluer side of that coral when you're getting it a nice solid daylight at least stretch mm -hmm. of maybe four to six hours where gotcha. you're getting some nice white light in there. Um, like you mentioned, it does look great under white light. Cool thing about that compared to some other strains of blue coral that we've had is it seems to have sort of greenish undertones, which do bring a little bit of fluorescence to it. So it does still have a little pop to it, even when you're looking at it under the actinics, which to me makes that a pretty unique blue. You know, a lot of times blues and purples tend to just sort of disappear when you hit those, uh, you know, without the whites. For sure. And this is a coral that's been around for a really long oh, time, yeah. right? It's one of the OG corals. We've mm -hmm. talked about this before, definitely. but it's definitely one of those original corals that kind of got brought into the hobby. It's been around for a long time, and I'm guessing we've had it here at the farm for a while, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We've been growing it for a long time. And it's not the fastest grower um, compared to a lot of other SPS that we have in the farm. So that was one that we had to acquire and really take our time with it. Um, it's not that it's necessarily slow, slow, but you need to get a substantial size piece or decent enough colony for it to really be able to produce, um, you know, at a high level and, and make enough frags where we can sustain it long-term without whittling that thing down. For sure. Well, you, we've started to talk about a couple other acros we've gotten from some other people. Um, I wanted to talk about some of the TSA signature pieces. Yeah. So we have the Fruity Pebbles is one that a lot of people know about. Yeah. It's the actual piece that created the, the splice, right? The grafted piece that we all know. Um, tell me about the Fruity Pebbles, when we got it, kind of how we got the name going. I know it looks like Fruity Pebbles, so that kind of makes sense, but kind of yeah. talk a little bit about that one. Well, I mean, the main thing, just anyone who looks at that piece is gonna see all the nice rainbowed out coloration on it. I mean, it's a nice tight tabling piece. So I think the, uh, the growth structure is fairly unique compared to a lot of Acroporas where people are probably more used to, you know, longer spindly branches. That thing, again, can grow more of almost like a plate shaped as it's, uh, as it's really rolling. Um, it's very hardy. I would say it can survive under a wide array of parameters. Um, time that we've had it, I mean, the exact timing, I'd have to, man, it's, it's been probably been almost a decade. Wow. Not quite, but yeah, it's, it's getting there, you know? So just those truly long-term aquaculture pieces, that's another thing you can kind of look at and say, hey, I know this is going to do well in my home aquarium because it's not like a, you know, a wild piece or a mariculture that just got shipped from overseas. Now it has to go through adjustment periods, right. get debugged, make sure it's clean. You know, this thing's used to growing under a wide array of different light spectrums. A lot of them are grown under straight LED lighting even here. And we've had great success with many different tanks, different light spectrums. Um, yeah, really across the board, that's one that hasn't given us too many problems and tends to have excellent color, uh, regardless of where we put it. Definitely. Yeah, I feel like those frags or these colonies that we've been growing out for so long, you know, like you said, almost a decade. At that point, we've conditioned it so well to the aquarium life that, yes, it may be an Acropora, but it seems like we may have made it hardier than most Acroporas normally are just by us keeping it in the hobby, keeping it in tanks and kind of keeping it around us. Yes, very true. Gotcha. So the Fruity Pebbles, where did we originally get that in from? What part of the world did this come in from? So that was imported as a wild colony, super pale, bleached out, you know, but just had those hints of rainbow colors um, originally from Australia. And that's just one we sat on, cooked it for a while and you know that's where the magic really happened and over time it started taking off and the color just got better and better it maintained a lot of the original vibrant tones like the uh, the hints of oranges purples greens uh, everything that people love about that piece and yeah it just got better and better so absolutely it's it's an amazing piece and i know in a later on video we'll talk about our some of our high-end stuff and the grafted side of that is a really nice piece and we'll definitely go into more detail about that but it all stems from the fruity pebbles correct yep, yep. gotcha right there. very cool 
So we'll jump into now, there's the Blue Seas Beast Monopora. Uh, this is a really cool Palawanensis Moni that I think, like we talked about in the beginner one, they have such a unique structure and yeah. growth, but this one's colors is crazy. Yeah, you know, I would say that's probably the one that when people are, uh, you know, walking around touring the farm, that the most people ask about. You know, it's just like you mentioned, um, there's so many different color varieties of those, but that one just stands out to you with the vibrant oranges and the polyps, you know, instead of a lot of the green tones that you'll see in many of them, are more of a vibrant purple. So uh, yeah, it's an interesting color combo. And it, yeah, at first when we got it in, it was a bit stubborn growing, but after a while we chunked it up into a lot of mini colonies and just spread it around to almost every one of our farm systems. Just you know, maybe a little stunted after um, running through the, the hardcore QT that yeah. we do, just to make sure that thing didn't have any nudibranchs or right. anything like that. But once we got it rolling, it really has taken off for us and is super happy. Even the frags are growing really well at this point. So yeah, that's probably my favorite as well. Okay, um, and I know we grabbed this, Stephen was telling me maybe about four or five years ago at a trade show, right? We picked it up, kind of yeah. choice picked it from a trade show and now we've grown it out in the facility to the point where we're kind of bringing it to the hobby. Oh yeah, very yeah. cool. Yep. Another signature TSA piece on the list, um, the Long Island. This is one that we have in our grow out competition that we're doing. Um, this is a really cool one. I want to hear more about the Long Island. I love the name. It's a good one. Um, I'm sure someone from up, from up north uh, made this name up, but it's a nice one. So let's talk more about the Long Island. You know, it's another tabling aggro, um, really pretty piece. I believe that one came in from Indo initially. You know, the, the cool part about that, I would say, it's just the variety of coloration on it. You know, as the piece tables out, you know, the inner sections tend to have more orangish polyps, and then the new growth will transition to more of a, you know, a tannish orange coloration, uh, and where it has almost pinkish corolites to the growth tips that are more like a pearly white that can almost look more bluish gotcha. under the right spectrums yeah. as well. And, and um, the very tips will accent with nice orangish yellow pore lights as, as in addition to that. So it just has a lot going on there. Um, very hardy, good grower too. Really nice polyp extension as well. So uh, if you're looking for something that has a little bit of movement that you might mm -hmm. see as far as um, you know, some action, not just a straight solid piece, that one will definitely sway in the current and get a little bit more movement in the tank for the people who like that outside of something like a millipora. Um, that's definitely an excellent one for that. Gotcha, yeah, I've seen a bunch of pieces across the farm that are crazy fuzzy and they're super cool to see bouncing around in the flow. So yeah. very nice piece. Yeah, I know, so we talked about two of our top shelf signature pieces. We've got the TSA Long Island, we've got the TSA Fruity Pebbles. I know these are two corals we have in our grow out competition. If you guys haven't seen on our grow out competition, we're doing one with a bunch of influencers, reef builders as well. And we're doing a grow out competition of five or six in total acros, is it? Six, is that what it is? I think it was six. I think it's six. So six Acropora that we're having a whole slew of people grow out in all kinds of different systems. The reason why we want to do this is to kind of do a little study ourselves to see how these things are developing, growing in all kinds of different systems across the country. Um, you know, we're seeing them here in all of our different systems. We, you know, put different colonies here and there, but we want to see how other people are able to get growth, color, and all those things. So if you guys haven't checked out the TSA Coral Smackdown, be sure to check that out very soon. Oh yeah, competition always brings out the best in people. So, you know, we'll have to, uh, well, or the worst, but you know, <laughs> it's definitely something that I'm excited to see what people can do when they're really motivated. And for sure, uh, you know, just tracking that because everyone has it in their tank and they just kind of like, oh, well, I think I've had it for this long. And, right. You know, they're not quite sure what the evolution is from when it's a little frag to actually being something more substantial. Yeah. So just seeing that. That's great. For sure. I definitely try to do that in my own tanks. Whenever I get a frag, I take a picture. It's kind of like a lock it into the memory bank yeah, and then yeah. down a couple months down the road, take more pictures and then that way I can kind of see the growth on it. So really cool. Really glad we're doing this grow out competition and something we're going to be doing in the future as well. So if you didn't make it into this grow out contest, we'll definitely have more soon. Another nice blend of colors with our next one on our list, the Cherry Corals Voodoo Magic. This is a really cool piece. I've seen a ton of people be able to grow it out and get some really nice colors out of it. We've had this farm for a little bit of time now, and what do you th think about this one? It's a great piece. It's um, you know one that holds its color really well. Another piece that gets excellent polyp extension. It gets you know that real nice 
movement in the water column. Uh, tabling piece, which is, I, I tend to gravitate towards those. Those are some of my favorites. A lot of times you can mount them going up a vertical face where you can have them fan out and give a really nice natural look where it's almost a stair step of keeping your colonies there. And just the, the way they develop rope-wise, I always you know, had in my heart for those tabling pieces. Um, that one gets some really wicked orange colorations too, which I would say for SPS is a, a little bit harder color to hit sometimes um, for, for your acros that from a distance you're gonna have that appearance that generally has more of an orangey hue to it. Um, you know, and in crusts even with some nice purples, get some purple on the, the tips, some other oranges and yellows, even a lot of times around the base we'll get a, a vibrant green fluorescent growth ring too, which is pretty cool especially when you see them on uh, smaller colonies before the thing gets covered up, hopefully long-term when you have a massive plate right. uh, piece. Um, yeah, all in all, great piece. I learned, I, I feel like every time I come into the farm, I learned something new. I saw a lot of comments in the last video talking about, man, you know, every time I talk with Kevin or anytime I hear from Kevin, I'm learning something new. And just right there, I was able to learn something new. I had no idea you could, you know, try and mount them on the back glass or any back wall force them to kind of encrust upwards and then you can kind of create more tabling on yeah, it. That's really on, cool. Um, you know, wall as long as you have enough flow right. and uh, lighting back there or just more on your vertical faces on your rock structure, okay. rock work and that sort of thing. You know, so a lot of times if you're hitting more of the edge of your structure, when you're planning your layout, that's one thing that, yeah, the more advanced you get, you, you almost have to anticipate the shape of those acrophoras right. long term because you don't want to put a big, big old stag right in the front middle area where it's just going to end up growing this giant claw structure where it blocks the view of everything behind it. You know, you could do a lot of those table pieces out off the sides and then do a lot of your taller stags or like, um, you know, digitatas and things like that as more background pieces where they'll extend out and won't really block your view as much. Um, but yeah, having an understanding about what the colony will eventually look like will definitely help plan where you're going to put it in your aquarium long term. You know, the trick I like to do is sometimes mounting the smaller frags on a, a chunk of rock with a little epoxy and glue, and then you can always move them. Um, so if it's not happy or before it really has encrusted on the rock, you can shift them around get them to their and happy place. get them to their happy place. Or if, you know, if, if you're not really liking the way um, the shape of it is gonna end up, you could always move it somewhere else. So the next one on our list, we talked about some stylos in our beginners list, but we're not talking about the branching stylos, we're talking about the encrusting stylos. So we're going to be talking about the Looney Tune stylo that we have here in the farm. This one's got some really cool colors. When did we get that one? Originally, I had a friend who had bought, I think like a, a three polyp frag from Worldwide Corals shortly after it had been released, when that thing was like the hottest one out there. It was, um, you know, going for some pretty crazy money. He'd actually let us grow that in our big display tank where we were farming out some different stuff. And then we worked out a deal and eventually had, um, you know, just grown our own colony from that after it got gotten a little bit bigger and all that. And we've also acquired a few other pieces as backups over the years. So now we have a pretty good amount of it. And the price, you know, obviously anything that's new, the longer it's been out will come down over time. And it's not anything crazy, but it's a very rainbowed out piece compared to a lot of them. It's not necessarily just two tones. That's one that if you have a nano tank or if you mount it closer to your glass and you really get up there with a magnifier, I mean, it's just got the craziest colors going on in there, you know, inside the polyp and the base color. And, you know, from a distance, it has, I would say, a little more orangey hue to it, you know, oranges and purples primarily. Um, but yeah, really pretty one. Cool thing about this compared to a lot of the other Acropora that we've been discussing and even the Montes is those guys do well in, in pretty low light across the board. So it's a great one if you have a high flow tank where the water's really churning around or a bare bottom that if you wanted to mount kind of semi shaded or near the bottom or even in crust on the bottom or on the back wall, uh, it, it's an excellent one for that. I've even seen some really cool ones where people will take like, um, you know, like a diver, or like a mermaid, things like that, and doing crusting corals over those where it'll just literally take the shape of the colony. Uh, so definitely a, a neat one and a lot, a lot of different things you can do with it. Gotcha, and you would probably offer the same advice with the encrusting, you know, if it's going too far, trying to build a border around it or something like that to kind of stop it and be able to pull it away. Yeah, and they're not overly aggressive. 
compared to some of the LPS corals that might um, send out you know, long sweepers and, and zap things. But you could definitely do that. That's a, a good way. Or if it's on a bare bottom tank, sometimes just getting out a little razor blade and just chipping off little chunks um, works well. Or if it's on the glass, yeah, just taking out a little chisel or a razor and you know, chipping it off as well. Sounds good. Next on our list is a really cool one. I love the contrasting colors in this one, the Jason Fox Fox Flame. This one's very nice. Um, it's been around for a long time as well. Um, that red and yellow though, the contrast is so cool. I love the coloring in it. Um, Jason Fox brings out all kinds of really cool stuff and we have a lot of his things here in the farm. Oh yeah, you know, definitely um, one of the OG guys. I mean, I have a lot of respect for what he does. Um, always, every show that we would go to when we were first starting out as a, you know, a store, we'd run over to his booth and say, hey, Jason, what's the, the hottest new thing you got? And, you know, early on, that was one of the ones that, that really stood out to us that we, that we loved and caught our eye. And we picked up a couple frags and, you know, had him growing a little 40 gallon display at the store for a while. And then over the years, yeah, just kept growing them, splitting them into other colonies, got to the point now where we have got probably a dozen different colonies scattered around the, uh, the farm, but um, it's still one that stands out to most people when they come by looking around. Just the, the vibrant tips on that are just such a, a, a beautiful yellow. And the base color can get some really nice reds. Looks you know, really good under the blue light where that yellow pops like crazy. And under the white light, the red really, really brings out that color too. So, you know, it's, it's, it's an excellent coral. Definitely one that I think will always be known in the hobby and any collector on SPS is probably gonna make sure they have one of those for sure. So yeah, to make mention, not every single one of these corals needs to be just blue light or just natural spectrum. There's a mix of a lot of these corals are gonna be looking good in both ends of the lighting. So if you run pros or if you run blues or if you run any other light that's gonna give you those kind of spectrums, you're gonna end up getting good color either way. All right, so the last coral on our list we're gonna talk about is from Battle Corals. This is the Bubble Bath Unicorn. You heard me right, Bubble Bath Unicorn is the name of this one and really killer piece, but another one we thought would be great for that next step in SPS keeping. So obviously the name's crazy. Coral's pretty sweet too. Yeah, yeah. And you know, if you're looking for something that has, I would say a little more variety um, than say a Paletta Pink tip, it's more like an OG classic green with the vibrant pink purplish tips. This one, I believe, is the same species and exact same growth structure, the way that thing forms as a colony, where it's got those thick branches that end up getting the nice vibrant purple tips. But it's almost like a cross between, you know, Paletta pink tip, our orange sickle, um, probably a Jason Fox shock tart, you know, as far as how it Gradients more from like a nice green base where it'll even get creamish colored orange core lights and gradient more to that. And the new growth gets a, a nice vibrant purple. And again, those those stags and the, the shape of those thick branched corals are a great one to be kind of a, like a crown showpiece in that aquarium. If you're looking for, you know, a nice big one to have a prominent spot up high, they can take a lot of light and, you know, plenty of flow. So they, they, they do well most places I've put them for sure. When did we get it from Battle Corals? Was it a little while ago? When was it? So that one we didn't get directly from them. Okay. Uh, got that from my buddy collector, uh, Chris Curry. He was the one okay. who originally had given us the uh, the Pearlberry okay. and the Oregon Tour. Gotcha. And he had gotten that from them. He's got all the classics. He's got a lot of them. I mean, I don't even know if that one's that old of a classic, but it seems like it's been around for probably five years now. Sure. Don't quote me on that, right. but yeah, that was definitely a nice piece. And it's a good one to add to that collection. If you got, you know, like a rainbow loom, a paletta pink tip, that one, orange sickle, any of those. I, I think it looks cool when you almost create a natural garden of similar shaped pieces. Yeah. You know, some people don't like that look, but you know, you can even let them sort of intermingle and they don't necessarily um, damage each other as much as some of the other competing species do. So, you know, it's not a bad one for that. And they're easy to prune and shape too, okay. without damaging the overall look of the colony. Awesome. Well, once again, guys, this was a blast hanging out in the farm, talking about corals again with Kevin. Kevin is our coral guru here. So been a ton of fun. The last video, we talked about the beginner SPS and we've taken it to the next step with our top 10 intermediate SPS. Be sure to stay tuned because we're gonna be doing a top 10 high-end SPS here very soon. That's gonna be a lot of fun talking about some really 
really cool colonies here in the farm. I'm already excited for that one. I you know. know that's my bread and butter right there. For sure. Kevin loves all the cool stuff, so we're definitely going to get to that video very soon. If you guys have hung out all the way till the end, I want to say thank you guys so much. Big thanks to Kevin. Definitely. Thank you. Um, be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bell notification so you don't miss out on any future uploads. Thank you.